welcome to the video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built an AI agent to learn, play, and end up winning the popular Flash game, Quop. My inspiration for this game was seeing Google's DeepMind and how its AI agent learned to walk and run from point A to point B. And I matched this with my deep, deep frustration with the game Quop that I've had over the years as I've tried to master it manually without any luck whatsoever. I am absolutely trash at the game. So I decided to cheat my way by creating an AI agent to play the game for me. We are going to create our AI agent using an evolutionary algorithm, or in other terms, a genetic algorithm. And what this algorithm does is it pretty much is based off of evolution itself and how humans evolved from monkeys. And it uses the same concepts of evolution uh, to help our runner advance and learn how to beat the game. So let's go ahead and kick off our genetic algorithm and I'll go through as it runs and explain what is happening and the algorithm itself. First off, we are using Selenium to automate our agent and to automate the key presses of the runner, the Q, W, O, and P. So for the purpose of this video, we are going to refer to our runner as Alan. Don't ask me why I chose the name Alan, just a random name that popped into my head. The algorithm that Alan is using to learn as he goes through the game is as follows. We start by creating an initial population, which is made up of genes and chromosomes linked together. Our genes for Alan are all the different combinations of key presses that are possible within the game of Quop using Q, W, O, and P, and then one gene called SL, which is just kind of a sleep or pause, don't press any buttons. We then add a random timestamp between one tenth of a second and three seconds to go along with that key press, and that makes up the gene. And then we string 10 random genes together in a row to form the chromosome. Alan will then continuously loop over this chromosome, going through the key presses and times for each key press until he either falls over or wins. And that is one individual within a population. And a population is 10 of these random chromosome combinations uh, in a row. And we just keep looping through the population. And as we loop through, we compute the fitness for each individual within the population. And our fitness for Alan is the distance he has walked or ran and made it in the game. And we get this score off of the screen by constantly taking screenshots of the game screen itself and extracting the text at the top where it says how far Alan has traveled and using that to just as the score for the fitness. So each run for Alan until he either falls over or wins the game is one individual within the population. So that randomly generated DNA that makes up the chromosome on repeat until he falls over or wins. And then once that happens to a size population size of 10, so 10 runs of Alan dying or winning uh, is a population size of 10. And then we do this pseudocode in the repeat section. So selection occurs, we take the top two fitness scores, the top two runs that Alan did. So the distance that Alan made it the farthest, we take those DNA of key presses and time press for each key. And then we perform crossover. Crossover chooses a point within the chromosome in which it will cross over and swap the DNA from both of the two top scores and then it now makes child or offspring of the population which has a mix of those top two scores and those will now be the new population 10 new offspring that will then be runs for Alan to try and complete and see if he does better 
and if he does better they become those new top scores that will then populate and reproduce to keep creating the next generations and generations so each time we repeat this step it is a generation because the dna uh, swaps we also perform mutation within the algorithm which whereas there's i give it a 10 percent chance of randomly altering the dna when it does this um, reproduction and offspring step. If we fast forward to generation 10, we can see that Alan has become extremely stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. And he has learned to actually just take a knee almost and barely, you barely move forward. This is part of to do with the fitness score itself because it's purely just how far Alan has ran or at this spot crawled almost. Uh, it doesn't take into account the speed or how fast he is moving. So Alan has learned to just take a knee and practically inch forward. So props to Alan for being a stubborn, stubborn uh, runner. And now we're gonna have to adjust our fitness sex, our fitness score, fitness function to now be the score divided by the, the time it takes. So we're gonna have to go ahead and rerun our simulation using this new updated fitness score. So I'll speed up the clip speed and let's watch Alan evolve over time. We can see off the bat that Alan is extremely stupid and hasn't learned anything at all. He's, but he's slowly trying out different combinations of key presses that end up him falling over. But eventually he starts to move forward direction uh, and not start to and not look like a total fool. He starts to kneel and actually be able to start making forward progress. And if we fast forward to generation eight, we can see that Alan has learned enough to scoot rapidly forward on one knee and make it all the way to 39 meters before face planting into the ground. And on the very next run, Alan makes a break for it and actually encounters something that I didn't even know was in the game because I've never made it close this far, the mythical hurdle. And Alan absolutely fails at the hurdle. Damn it, Alan. Alan has to get back to the drawing board so that he can surpass this hurdle the next time he faces it. Alan continues to run through the individuals within populations and continues to evolve over time. So he just keeps doing trial and error, learning from his mistakes so that he can have a better score and better run on the following, the following run and you'll see that he slowly becomes faster and slowly becomes more intelligent as an AI agent in general. This is the genetic algorithm at play and constantly repeating that loop of selection of the fittest, natural selection, uh, mu uh, mutation and reproduction to continuously get better over time. And we can see that Alan is indeed learning This time when Alan faces the hurdle, he has learned and does not fall down right away. He's actually able to tip it over and then continuously move forward while pushing it. But you'll see that still Alan has not learned to overcome the mythical hurdle and will actually fall over. <laughs> Fast forward to generation 14 of the genetic algorithm. And this time around, Alan has evolved enough to actually surpass and beat the hurdle. Finally, congrats, Alan. And he is actually now going to be able to actually get himself over the hurdle after toppling it over, which is a pretty impressive feat. And he's learned this through the algorithm evolving. And he will be able to get 
over the hurdle and hopefully make a push for the finish line. So as Alan makes the home stretch down the final 20 meters, I just want to say thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel to see more AI coverage and more AI videos in the future. It would mean a lot to me. Not to mention, it would mean a lot to Alan. I know he's become very attached to you all as you've ventured with him through his evolution journey. Also, let me know down in the comments whether you wanna see a second video where I cover all the code used in this video to control Alan and the algorithm behind it. Alan is coming up to the finish line and completing Quop. We successfully created an AI agent that evolved to beat the game. Yeah!